Okay, we're back with part two. Uh, example two. More graphing. Um, graph each function on the given grid, and we see that our original function is uh, y equals 2 to the exponent x, and we can set up our original graph, and then in B, C, and D, we're just doing stuff to that basic graph. Again, we've got to be able to do this without, without too much thought, be able to do this very quickly. Well, what are the points we're going to graph? Well, negative 1 and then the flip of the base. 0, 1 is on every basic graph, and then 1, 2. And notice, because the base is so small, we'll be able to fit in a few extra values, and I'll, and I'll put those on, on there. Uh, negative 2 and a half is right there. 0, 1. I'm trying to make these nice big fat dots so we can see them later. And notice there's a lot of room up here. So if, if x was 2, 2 to the exponent 2 is 4. I'm going to put that one on there. That's there. And even I might be able to fit on, on x is 3. The output 2 to the exponent 3 is 8. Let's see. 5, 6, 7. Yeah, I can. Right there. The, the must-have points are these ones I'm circling. Okay? And not often we'll get any other ones on there, except for maybe when it's the base is 2 or the base is, is 3, um, that sort of thing. And there's my basic function, y equals 2 to the exponent x. And now, what happens when I have a number like 3 out front? Well, for trig functions, we think of this as an amplitude change. And exponential functions don't really have an amplitude, but that's what it is. This is, this is a vertical stretch by 3. Vertical stretch factor 3. So it means all of the vertical distances get multiplied by 3. Where it used to be 1 unit, now it's going to be 3 units. So this point gets stretched to 3 times as far. This point, which was 2, gets stretched to 3 times as far. Uh, this point, which was a half, gets stretched to 3 times as far, which is 1 and a half. And that's where the three important points, the three nice points, end up. And then I can graph that function. And we've done this. You did this last year with parabolas. And we did this sort of thing with, with trig functions already. And you did them last year with a few other types of functions, including, including exponential functions. So I'm, I'm guessing that this isn't going to be too much of a surprise to you. Um, this next one here. The minus 1 is in with the x, right? So we know something's going to go on in the direction of x. Something's going to go on horizontally. And remember, whenever when we're dealing with x, it's opposite that we think. We think minus 1 sounds like it's left, but it's actually going to be right. We're going to move right 1. Um, same thing as when we had something like sine of x minus 30. That was right 30 degrees. Um, this is right 1 unit. So this original function, this black one, all the nice dots are going to get moved right one unit. So this one gets moved to here, this one moves, get, gets moved to here, this one gets moved to here, everything gets moved right one unit, right one unit. And then there's the new function. y equals 2 to the exponent x minus 1. All right, lastly, what color? I'm running out of colors. Blue, why not? Um, this minus 1 is outside of the x, right? It's outside. It's affecting y values. So what's this? This is a move down 1, down 1. And so all the points get moved uh, down 1 from the original graph, move down 1. 1 is 2 units vertically, down 1. Down 1 gets moved to there, down 1. And I know your graph is probably get, starting to get a little bit confused, but that's fine. Um, notice what else happens here. What else happens here is our asymptote, it gets moved down one, too. So that's a good thing to, to, to draw in there, is a dotted line to show where the new, the new um, asymptote is. And I'm going to draw that in in blue. I, I could have just used my, you know my pen, but um, that's where the new asymptote is, at negative 1. It was y equals 0, it got moved down 1 to negative 1. 
and there's my new new function. And hopefully your graph looks a little bit better than mine. They, it does look good if you if you use different colors. I'm having difficulty using my um, my writing device to be accurate here, but that's uh, not so bad. All right, moving on. What do we got? One left. One left. Graph that function with a whole bunch of stuff going on, a whole bunch of stuff going on, and we have to state a bunch of stuff. So uh, let's start with the basic graph. And I'm going to show a few steps. It's really hard to draw the final version of these. We're going to sort of build up to it. So the, the basic graph is that one. And I'm going to draw the, those, those points, right? Well, I know 0, 1, 1, and then the base, and negative 1 and the flip of the base, which is a third. And that's kind of hard to draw, but I'm guessing it's right there. Notice, again, because the, the base is so small, if I, if I had that as 2, 3 to the exponent is 2 is 9, and I can actually fit that one on there. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then this is the basic function. And I want to make sure I can see those nice points. So I'm going to make them bigger and fatter and nicer. Right, and now what? Well, if I gra if I write, I'm going to write this out, and then we'll talk about what each of these numbers do does. Well, what does this minus 2 do? It's not in with the x, so something's going to go on vertically, right? This is a vertical flip, or reflection is the fancy math word, and it's also stretched by a factor of 2. Stretch by a factor of 2. And I'm hoping we can do this in one step. I always like starting with the the, the uh, y-intercept. Um, I'm going to flip it to there and then stretch it by a factor of 2. Where it was at 1, now it's at negative 2. So right there. Where it was at 3, now it's going to be flipped to 3 and stretched to 6. Uh, here, flip to negative 9 and stretch to negative 18 way down here. We're not going to get that one on the graph. Um, here, where it was a third, flip to negative a third and stretch to negative two thirds, even though that's pretty hard to tell. That's not bad right there. I'm going to make my pen thinner so this doesn't become a, uh, too much of a mess. Notice this isn't our final graph, right? This isn't our final graph, but what would be the equation of this? Well, all I've done is flip and stretch this one. This is the flipped and stretched version like that. Now what do I have to do? I have to move this one not left 3 because that would be if the plus 3 was in with the x but this is hanging out outside. This is this red one moved up 3. And I'm going to start that by drawing my new asymptote. So if the asymptote gets moved up 3 it's going to be right here. right? It was there now it's been moved up 3 and now each of these points I can move up 3 or I could draw the same thing, so many um, units off of, off of my asymptote. So that's right there, up 3, 1, 2, 3, up 3, um, 1, 2, 3, and now I've got my graph. Okay? Well, it's not that beautiful, but oh well. You guys are used to this by now. Plus 3. Um, the stuff... Oh, this is up three, by the way. This is the work. It's important for me to see these words from you. So if you goof up your graph, I know what you were thinking. Okay, so this is this is your work on these questions. Um, the horizontal asymptote. Well, what's that line right there? If that's this was the line y equals zero. This is the line y equals three, isn't it? Uh, what's next? Y-intercept y-intercept. It looks like on the graph, although I did a pretty horrible job of it, it looks like it's 0, 1. Notice if you have a tough time seeing that, you could also just calculate it, right? The y-intercept happens when, when x is 0. In the final function, when x is 0, I have this expression. Well, anything to the exponent 0 is 1, so this is negative 2 times 1, and I see that negative 2 plus 3 equals 1 and Yes, indeed, it is 0, 1, so, so that's good. Um, and the range. Notice the domain is still all real numbers, even though I flipped and stretched and moved this thing left and right. And it's still all real numbers, but the range is different, right? 
well, where's the uh, where's the shadow on the x-axis? Well, or on the y-axis rather, for this green function, I can see it goes up here, and then all the way down, right? With never quite becomes y equals three. That's the asymptote. So the range then is y is less than three. All the numbers less than three. And notice that this function is always decreasing as well. The function is always decreasing. I think this is, that's a question that your book asks once in a while. Um, that's it. Uh, again, your textbook didn't do a very good job with this uh, graphing business, uh, so the homework tonight is on a handout. You don't write on the handout, so I can use that again next year. Um, good luck.